All right, so welcome to Cinema 4D and our first scene for the Drawing Particle project. You can see we have a spline in our scene called XP Graffiti Path, and it's just a scrawling of X particles. We're going to use this for a various different ways to draw on particles, of which there are many. So we're going to we're going to first off introduce a few of those methods in this video. So let's add an emitter and let's let's start emitting particles from our spline. That's kind of the first really basic way to draw particles onto our screen uh, using X particles. So let's uh, let's select the XP graffiti path, and we could we could go through the process of adding an emitter, turning it to object mode, and then in edge mode, and then connecting it up, or we can use the handy new quick tools, and just click emit from object. You can bind that, or you can place that icon anywhere in your UI if you want, and that's already. If you look here, we, we've created an emitter, and it's got the XP graffiti path connected. And if I press play, we'll actually get particles emitting into the scene. Now, obviously, they're way too small to see, or perhaps there's just not enough of them. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drop the speed off, because obviously they're moving away from our, our spline. Then I'm going to increase the rate, and then I might as well increase our timeline whilst I'm here as well. Let's just do, let's do 600 frames. That's probably plenty. And we can also hide this spline. And let's go back to the beginning. And you can see immediately, as soon as I press play, because of the rate is so high, in fact, let's drop the rate right down, back to a thousand. You can see it draws on our spline. Now that's all very good, pretty uninteresting, I would say. There's definitely better ways and more interesting ways to, to bring our particles on. And it's not very artistically interesting. It's not drawing or it's not moving the particles along at all. But from this position, we can try some different stuff. We can have them moving away. So we could have them kind of moving along now, in the default emission modes, so can you see it's moving too fast? It's moving fast away so fast that it's actually, it's unreadable. So let's change the speed to like 10. Let's increase the rate maybe to 5,000. And it just keeps it more legible. And even that is quite interesting. I think you'd want to play with color here. So maybe we go to the display tab, change the color mode to gradient parameter. And let's just give it a nice multicolored gradient. Let's do, let's do full colors. There we go. So the it's based on age. If I drop if I drop the the range down to three hundred, there we go. So you can see as it's as it's emitting them, but even still, I mean, if we could make these first ones bright white, actually, the youngest particles. There we go, and you can play around with that. But again. It's not particularly the most interesting thing. We can definitely play with the the radius of the or the direction of the particles. We can change it to random. So if it's random, they're just going to move away from the the edge. And you can see actually we lose some of the fidelity there of the the type. So we can go back to the emission tab, reduce the speed down. We could make it zero, of course, but I think that would be uninteresting. And you get an idea that if I increase the number of particles again, actually, there we go. You kind of get the idea that it draws the particles, and there might be something to this, but it's kind of, you know, it's, it's the fairly the basic ways, and it might suit a certain project. Um, I'm currently emitting from a, a random point along this spline, like all the way along it, it's just, it's going to, each each frame is going to sample the emitter and, and put uh, particles out from every single part of it, or a random point on it. If I change the emission point to set, You'll see I actually have this position here. I can I can actually animate this position. So if I add a keyframe, let's say at frame 20, and then around about 210, let's animate it to the end. Oh, <laughs> I've added a keyframe to the uh, to the par wrong parameter there. Let's go back to frame 20, set that to zero, and let's press play and see what happens. So you can see now, what's happening is, is our emitter is tracing along the splines. It's, it's telling the particles to emit at this percentage position. So you can imagine if we show our, our graffiti path, about here, about here is halfway on this particular one. So when we see this hit 50%, this position, there we go, it's just gone past it, is around about halfway down. So you can think of it like that. Now... If we let that play, that's looking pretty cool. 
but the particles are moving too far away from our original shape, so they're kind of losing how we how readable they are. So this, again, this is all about: do you want to give it some sort of speed? We could, of course, have them move away and then decelerate. Let's hide our path again, and there we go. You get a finer emission, and that looks pretty interesting, pretty cool. Uh, we could even have it like emit a lot of particles and have them have a finite age. So let's make the speed a bit higher again, like so, and then have them die off basically as they go. Let's do 30 frames. Now the difference with this is, is that it won't leave the image of the, the text behind because the particles are going to die off. So you can see here we're tracing them but we're not actually seeing what the text is because it's not they're not they're dying off too soon. So maybe you want to have a kind of a combination of these that kind of thing. Maybe if I change the lifespan to sort of 60 drop the speed back down to 1 and then you'll start to find a balance between, you know, how long you're letting it run and readability. So that's pretty quite that's quite an interesting one. Looking pretty cool. Okay, so there's that one. And then we could also do things like go back to the let's uh let's give it the full lifespan again. And let's go to the object tab. Now let's uh not animate anymore. Let's go to position zero. Now we've got this other thing called spread here, and what we had what we had there, if you notice now, it emits from just a point. If I use spread, if I just increase spread, you'll see that it actually emits along a section of the spline. Like on each of these splines, 28% of them is going to be included. So if I do 60, there we go. And if I go to our emission point and set that to be 50%, and I set our spread to be 10%, it should, you know, on this one particularly, it should be across the middle here. There we go. A bit more than that if we do 20. There we go. And then we could animate that one up as well. So let's see what that looks like. So go from 20. It's a bit of an arm, just grabbing a, a number there. And to 100. Did I just keyframe the wrong thing again? No, but I did give it a spread of 100. There we go. So if I press play, this will now add up at, at each frame. It'll spread along the spline from, from that particular point, that point position. And of course, we could at still animate the position, and that would give you another effect. Now, it's running quite slow because I have a lot of particles emitting into our scene. We don't need that many. So I've just dropped it down by a factor of 10 to 50,000. And there we go. So that's looking pretty interesting. And I quite like that kind of stuff where it's sort of a bit abstract, a bit weird looking. Um, yeah, why, why don't we animate this position parameter? Let's do that. So whilst that's animating, let's do... A position animation, see what happens. Yeah, it kind of looks a bit similar to the other one. It sort of accelerates the process, though, because we're kind of keeping up with it. So it doesn't really make it look that interesting. Let's let's undo that, take that last keyframe out. Now, there is, there is an option here which says uh, unidirectional spread only. What that means is, is that it's going to go... Let's set that to 50, actually. So currently, it goes both ways along the spline. If I click unidirectional only, you'll see it actually forces it. It starts at this 50% this position, and then it loops back around again at the other end. And we can have that not wrap around at the other end if we, if we check this do not wrap emission. So it just stop at the end. So that's if you want to just emit on, on the la you know, a last section of a continuous spline and that kind of thing. Okay, so I'm going to turn those two off again. And this time, we're going to probably just emit across all of the spline. So if we go back to random, there we go. And they're moving away, that kind of stuff, that's cool. Now, currently, it's emitting on the whole spline. And in Cinema 4D, splines are actually broken up into seg segments. So if I click on one of these and I hit um, select connected, select connected i actually hit my shortcut which is uw and then you can see this is a this alone is a segment so we can actually address those and have the particles emit from those segments so we can go to use segments and select them and let's do 
let's just start with zero. Now zero in, especially in programming and things like that in computers, it, zero is the first in a list. So zero is actually the first one we come to. It's, it's number one, if you like, but it is referred to as segment zero. So if I then click to segment one, it jumps to the next one and so on and so on and so on until we get to the end. Now, I don't actually know how many segments this spline has. There is a way to find out. So what happens if I go, if I just keep going and it looks like uh, there's 14 segments because I'm on segment 13 and the S is drawing. If I hit 14, I'm back at the same, uh, I'm back at zero because it's, it's returning a null result. So it's just, there is no segment that is segment 14, therefore default to zero, same and anything beyond that. So what we can do, if you need to find out how many segments a spline has, by the way, there is a way. So if you click on the spline and you go to mode in the attributes manager and hit project info, you'll see here we have a few things. We have uh, object selection, structure, that kind of thing. Now I use structure a lot. That gives me some spline information. You can see the spline length. That's all very useful to have sometimes if you're trying to do timing, that kind of thing. But the one we want is the selection one here. And it just tells me how many of our spline segments there are. So there's 14. So that's zero through to inclusive zero through to 13. So that's just something useful if you ever need to do that. But I think, you know, we can see this is interesting, but it would be much more interesting if it was animated. So let's animate this one. So if I hit zero and then around about, let's say, I want to, I'm going to create a loop actually. So if I go look at hundred frames, hits our 13th segment, and then I'm going to make this a linear keyframes so that it's just quite consistent. And if I press play and we'll see what happens, Oh, I need to go back to zero. Remember, and there we go. It starts to draw these on. So it's kind of pulsing them on. They're probably a bit too fast, actually. So let's go to 150. Nice. Okay, so that's pinging them on there and there and there. Almost like a neon sign activating. Or exploding, actually, I would probably suggest, if the, if the particles are all flying out. <laughs> um, okay, so there's that part. But what it, we, could, we could loop that as well by using the timeline. So if I go Shift F3... Just bring up our dope sheet and we can click on this segment uh, track here and down here you'll see in our attributes manager and there's also ways to, to access these up here so if you go functions and you can see there's like constant after what that means is it's just going to maintain whatever the last keyframe is it's just going to maintain whatever that was and just continue and you can see actually there's a black line here if you watch this black line if i change this track from after to that to repeat you'll see it's now repeating that exact animation and you can tell it how many times you want it to repeat so i can just go you know give it a bunch and it'll just continue so if i press play now we'll get the in fact let's go back to it being quite fast there we go There we go. It's kind of looping. And because the particles are already there, it kind of gives it this kind of light core. Yeah, I don't think our particles are dying off, are they? Oh, yeah. So let's let our particles die off. Oh, too fast. There we go. And it's, yeah, quite too fast, I would suggest, but still quite fun. There we go. Give them a 60 age. There we go. Quite aggressive, probably too fast again, but yeah, you get the idea. So this is different ways of drawing, but sort of non-traditionally and using the particles to reveal this, this spline that we have underlying here. So that's pretty fun. Now, another way to do things, uh, we've already sort of done the drawing along the spline, but it kind of, it spread along the whole spline, uh, sort of different segments at, at a time instead of drawing along the spline. To do that, we might need to utilize something else, and we're going to utilize the Mo spline. So if I actually add a Mo spline, I can just bring up the commander, which is Shift C by default, and type in Mo spline. Here we go. 
Let's go back to zero. And we're going to change our mouse spline from simple mode to spline mode. And then we just need to associate our graffiti path with this spline. And there we go. We can see it's now drawing. Let's hide our original spline. And also, let's make sure that our emitter is seeing is related to this mouse spline. So if I go to the object tab, just drag our mouse spline in. I'm just going to give it the same name, but this as a suffix. So just copied that name and pasted it in there. It just helps to be able to know which one's re uh, referring to which in the inner scene if you ever add more things in. Always good to be organized. Okay, so, right. Now we've got this, and it's going to just behave exactly as it was before. So if I hide that, it's going to do exactly as it was in the last mode because it's just seeing the most spline as a whole spline. So if I go back to and reset a few things, let's pause this. Let's take the keyframes off the segment and make sure it's using all segments. There we go. I should I should also I should mention actually there's this thing down here called particle direction. We'll deal with this a bit more later. But currently I've set it to random, but there's the, the default modes. If you have it in default, which is normal, the particles will actually just move along the spline. So they'll start with a direction that is is uh, tangential to the spline. And if we give them a full lifespan, a bit more speed. There we go, you'll see that. That can look really cool. So we're back to that. Uh, but also we've got these other options. We've got this uh, Fong Normal. Now, Fong Normal allows you to uh, emit away from the spline. It's almost like it's a, a rail spline. So that can give an interesting look. Although pretty unreadable at that point. Random, of course, and then per axis, so we can give it a specific direction. That looks like some kind of nice 70s or 80s logo. <laughs> might, might be useful in some scenarios. Uh, um, amongst all that, actually, we also have uh, sort of this, um, if I go back to normal, there's a perpendicular to normals and we can invert and stuff. And then because we're not this random blend, we don't have access to this yet because this is not geometry. So we don't need to worry about that. There we go. But that's looking pretty cool. Okay, but let's get back to our most spline. I'm going to drop it back to random. So it's just going to randomly emit off the um, the particle, sorry, the spline. Uh, drop the speed right down. There we go. And then let's have a, a finite lifespan. Bit of variation. And of course, you can add other modifiers in, but I'm just demonstrating the creating of the particles at the moment so i'm also just going to filter off the grid because it's kind of getting annoying filter the grid might as well filter the world axis as well there we go and also sometimes when i'm working in these sort of scenes where it's the colorful particles a dark background is quite useful now r21 obviously has that uh this is r20 at the moment so i'm going to go and check add us just add a sky object and make it like a dark gray and I'm just going to make sure it's not rendered. So there we go. Cool. So they stand out a little bit more. But we could play with the display a bit later anyway. Okay, so finally, let's get to our most spline. Now, with a most spline, you're given loads of control over how to animate a spline onto the screen. So if I display our most spline, I also like to display it in line mode. So it's just a single line. I'm going to turn off the extended stuff and... If I just animate the end backwards, you'll see, or scrub it backwards, you can see now forwards, we can draw on the whole spline. And you'll see, if I go to separate segments mode, this is how the spread and the position was behaving on the emitter. It's, it's doing exactly the same thing. It's, it's just looking at the segment itself, zero to 100% along that particular part, and then it animates. That's fine, that might be useful somewhere, but the complete spline allows you to draw along the spline. So because of the way this was drawn, these were drawn in order, in sequence, so the segments are correctly ordered, and therefore they will move along at, you know, this 0 to 100% will move along the spline, jump to the next segment, and there we go. So let's, let's keyframe that. So let's start at the 20 frames. And then let's do 210 maybe. There we go, add our keyframe. 
And now you got a bit of a preview of it there. But you can see now our emitter is emitting all along the spline, but because the spline itself is drawing on and is forming as the thing, you actually get this nice drawing on effect. So that's really cool. And of course, if we let those particles die off, so, and when it gets to the last frame, what was it? It was 210. If we tell the, the emitter to stop emitting at frame 210, our particles will actually die off. So, let me watch here. See, they're still emitting at this very first point, and then it fades away. So there's, there's loads of ways to control the animation of the splines, the drawing of them, how they're going to look, the shape of them, all that stuff. It's really cool. And I really like the Mo spline for the level of control that you get with it. So that's, that's another way of doing it. And um, if we actually, we can also do, you know, the similar thing with the offsetting. So if I, whatever I do, let's just do one last demo on that. So if I display our, let's turn the emitter off whilst we do this. So if I, you can see we can we can have the start kind of scrub as well, and we can have offset working as well. So maybe that starts drawing on, and then uh, around at some point this starts to draw it off as well. So go to a frame, so 130 offset, and then just beyond that I'm going to go sort of beyond there, and then the offset is going to go 100 percent. So let's press play, and it's drawing on. Now, oh, let's put the emitter back on and go back again. There we go, and we could hide our most spline. So away it goes. Now you can see the particles stop now emitting on this, and you get this nice fading effect. So up to you on how you play around with that stuff. That's really cool. And those are some of the base ways that we've done it. Now we can use modifiers as well. So there is a follow spline modifier. And what that will do is that will attract particles to the spline. And there's also a flow field that we could use for that kind of thing. Um, but in this case, we're not going to be doing that. I want to be drawing the particles uh, using source splines and keeping it as basic, uh, or not, not basic, but as simple as possible to create the particles. Because what we're going to do with them later is the sort of more advanced stuff. But let's just demo one of those things. Let's do a follow spline. Um, or actually, let's do a spline flow. So let me just go to the modifier stack. If I open these, and you can see we've got a ton of these. If I do the icon size large, we've got so many of these, but these are the few that you're going to be really interested in if you want them to follow along a spline. So there's follow path, which will follow a bunch of uh, objects inside the, the, that modifier. Follow spline, let's add that. And also spline flow. These two are the, probably the, the main two that you'd use. Now, Follow spline is quite simple. Let's turn this one off for now. So follow spline, you just connect up a spline. You take the emitter. Uh, let's actually turn that emitter off for now, and let's create a new one. In fact, let's just duplicate this one. So I'm holding Control or Command. And there we go, XP emitter. And follow spline, just so we know which one it is. And now, well, we could set it to the... We could set it to either, but I'm just going to set it to follow this one. There we go. And let's change this emitter, this follow spline emitter, to a just a circle. Let's make it small. If I press play now, not much is going to happen because we're nowhere near the beginning of the spline. So if I turn this back on, we need to be... Well, we don't always need to be, but in this particular default setup, you need to kind of be at the end of this spline here. So I just turned on snapping there, by the way. I have a shortcut for it. So I enabled snapping. It's vertex snapping. And I just snapped to the start. And it should start following. It is, it, yeah, it is following. But it's what happens is, is if we hide this. Oh, am I trying to hide the spline and I hide the modifier? Can you see how it's following down the spline, but it's kind of slowing down? It's because the follow spline can be quite aggressive. So... I'm going to turn acuteness of turn down. And I'm going to set it to complete in a specific amount of time. So there we go. And you can see it's kind of jumping down. Now, 
in this particular moment, we're using a specific segment. We're using the first segment, but we could also use the nearest segment. So it's kind of a bit more dynamic. It'll just, wherever I am, it'll jump to the nearest segment. And you can see here, it's going to grab on to... Oh, I'm not near enough. I've got probably too many particles whilst I'm doing this. So let's just press play. Put on this one. So it'll just grab onto that one. And you can see we're having problems trying to get it to follow along because the follow spline is quite an aggressive modifier in terms of its it sets the velocity of the particles. So we need to... There's a few things you need to do to sort of force it along the spline. So that kind of stuff. At the moment, the acuteness of turn, it's keeping it very close to the to the spline and it, it's not very visible to us. You can see it's running along it. But you'll also note that it's not jumping over to the next one. So there's a, this is a problem here. Like if I just move along, you'll see it'll grab them, grab the particles, but it's going to be quite fiddly to kind of get that to work. So there are other mods that are more sort of organic in the way they work. And that's what leads us on to spline flow. So that was just a very quick example of follow spline. So this one is called spline flow. Or one word, of course. And in this one, we can just drop that spline in as well. And you'll see all of a sudden, we've got a bunch of sort of uh, circles in our scene. And what this is, is this is actually distributing these sort of handles along our spline. But you'll notice it's only on the first segment. Uh, there we go. There we go. Oops. So I'm shrinking these down. Now if I put our emitter back up over here, I've still got snapping on, turn that back off. And now we can see the particles will actually follow down. Oh, I need to make them last. There we go. Make them emit in all frames as well. There we go. And you can see that's a much more organic motion along the spline. However, we've we, you can see the issue here is going to be uh, getting it onto the next segment. So to, to do that, there's, there's no sort of native way of doing that. So you would have to break your spline up into multiple parts and then create a spline flow per object. So that's not very convenient. So I would suggest this, this isn't going to work for our scenario. But that is a really cool modifier, especially if you want to create some cool flowing particles. Okay. Now this gets us on to the final way of of drawing particles and that's actually sort of closest perhaps to the real world way of drawing. If you think about drawing and if I just take our emitter whilst the scene is playing let's give it loads more frames and make sure we're emitting in all frames. Yep. Now if you think about it what are you doing when you're drawing something say on pen and paper is you're taking some ink so we can think of the particles as ink or paint uh, paint is the one we're going to use here and you're going to move the brush so you're going to move the brush and it's going to deposit these particles or spray these particles onto this surface and then you just trace where you need to go so you're moving the object obviously you're moving what you need to draw to these things and obviously in a 3d environment like this oh, oh our particles are moving away it's a bit weird but yep we'll change that um let's delete this one let's add this one back on um what we're going to do is we're actually going to animate some geometry along a spline along this spline i should say and what that'll let us do is it will allow us to move uh, or, or target this spline with our emitter and it will basically draw it on as as if we were spray painting it onto the surface. So let's uh, let's set some things up for that. And the first thing you might think about if you're going to move an emitter around or emit some sort of from geometry would be to use the align to spline tag in Cinema 4D. Now there's a limitation with that, and I'll show you what that is. So if I right click and add our align to spline, or you could have searched that align to spline. There we go. And we're going to connect up our graffiti path. And what we're going to do is we're going to let it move along this spline. But you'll see 0 to 100% is the maximum this will allow. And then it doesn't jump over, which is what we wanted to do. We want it to suddenly jump over to this and start drawing here. But it won't allow us to do that. We'll have to click this, you know, we'll have to click this segment. 
and do the same again. Now this might end up similarly to how we were just describing that other one where we'd have multiple emitters for each segment. That's just not very convenient. Or we have to time lots of keyframes to do this. And I don't think that's going to be very fun. So I've got a, a workaround for this. And it's a pretty common workaround in, in C4D actually for, for animating along these. And that's to actually clone an object onto the the um, spline which will allow us to move that along. Another option of course is to use the Mo spline that we were using earlier. So if I just, in fact let's just demo that. If I just clear the keyframes off this and I have it, there we go, no, I'll have no offset. Uh, let's put our animation back on. Oh let's shrink our timeline, it's a bit excessive. There we go. I do that a hundred times in a project, sort of flicking back between that sort of long timelines and short timelines. There we go, so that's just drawing on as it was before. So what we can do though is we can actually take this this spline and reference, like I said, a cloner with it. So or cloner a piece of geometry onto it. So I will keep the Mo spline. And maybe I'll take the keyframe off it for now. I'm just going to deactivate it actually. Let's um let's add our cloner. So let's just add a cloner. There we go. And add a piece of geometry. Now I'm just going to start with something really simple. Let's just add a, a polygon. And if we put it in the cloner. And let's scale it down. We could even set it in the attributes here to 10 by 10. So I've got this cloner. It's set to linear at the moment. Let's change it to object. And let's add our graffiti path. And you'll see we get a bunch of cloned items on it. Now I don't want it to do this. I actually want it to only create one. And I want it to create one per the whole object. And you can see here there's a per segment option. Turn that off. Puts it here. Let's turn our let's turn our path on just so we can see where, where they are. And what we want to do is we're going to offset along this. Now you'll notice that it does actually jump at the end there to the next segment, but it doesn't seem to go any further than that. Same as our, pretty similar to how our aligned to spline was working or not working as I should say. Um, what we can do is we can actually go beyond 100% on this offset. And what that is, is it, it essentially, it's like an additive value. There we go, you can see it follows along and traces that whole spline. And you'll note, if you look at the percentage, it's actually relative to how many segments there are. If you recall, there were 14 segments total. So obviously we start at the first one and 14 times 100% is 1400%. So that means it's going to complete 14 splines or 14 spline segments to 100%. So let's let's put that keyframe. Let's bake, let's uh, actually add that keyframe. I'm going to put it at frame ten this time. Let's set it to two ten, and let's drag it the offset and hit fourteen hundred. Now sometimes see if I, as I hit there, it's fourteen hundred. It jumps to the end. If I just notch it back by a fraction, it doesn't have to be perfectly on the end there, and add a keyframe, because what it's doing is it's looping back to and it would continue looping around, but. It, you could just say there's this option here, turn loop off. But the problem with that is, is that kills our jumping to the next segment, which is kind of the trick we're using here. So we've got it moving along our spline. That's pretty cool. Whizzing around. And there we go. Now it's a bit fast, so I might just increase that to 290. And I might make it more constant as well. I might make the speed a bit more constant, but let's let's just see how that looks. So along it goes, tracing, nice. Okay, so now pretty straightforward. We just have to emit from this cloner. So let's um, go to our emitter up here, which is actually going to become our. Well, we just take the name off it. We could just call this spray paint because this is what it is: spray paint. And let's add our cloner as our source object. And we don't want to emit from the edges. Let's do polygon area. And it's currently set to random, but let's set it to normal, which is the default. Or if you just right click a parameter and you can hit reset to default, press play, and you'll see we start to draw. And you can see there's something interesting happening here. Oh, apart from the particles dying, of course. Let's turn them full life. 
commit in all frames. Probably don't need as many as that for now. And we know we want no speed. So just want them to stay where they are. Okay, so we're kind of tracing here. Now you'll see it jumps and we get these these particles emitting here. That's because we've got subframe emit on. And what it's doing is it's emitting in between those points. To be honest, I quite like that. So I'm going to leave that on. If you don't want that on, that's no problem. But you will suffer issues here. Can you see whilst we're on the spline, we actually get this stepping, which works with subframe uh, emission here. But yeah, so th the thing is, is that I'm kind of treating this like you're spraying a can really fast and you're shifting across, so it's not a problem. If you wanted to have like ultimate control over that, you can absolutely keyframe down the emitter at those moments. But I, I honestly don't think that's worth it. I think I quite like the look that we're getting. So you'll notice we're actually getting the, the you know, the X particles is drawn nicely. And it's using a brush shape that is square. And that's because we've used this polygon. So if I make it larger, Oh, I've got it that orientation. So I've got it kind of facing along the spline. But you'll see we get a really interesting look if I hide the... Because of the shape of it, and I can try this again. Here we go. And now, now it's kind of like a broad brush. But we could also rotate it using the actual cloner itself. So we could actually rotate the... So let's say 45. So it's kind of a calligraphy brush. There we go. So you can definitely tell there's there's some cool ways that this could be utilized. Now that's kind of becoming a bit unreadable, probably because of the size of it. So if I just drop it down, there we go. It might still be a bit too fast, but you can see we're getting this nice calligraphy stuff. And we could random, we could even animate the rotation. We could have effectors come in, but I'm not actually using it in that way. I'm I'm treating this as if it's the nozzle on a on a spray can. So that's how we're thinking of this. So, and this will actually become the basis of a bunch of our, our setups. So I'm actually going to replace this with something that's actually a circle, because the spray cans tend to have a circular nozzle, or kind of a circle, maybe ellipse. So what I can do is I could just use, I could use an extruded uh, spline, uh, or I'm just going to use a disc, keep it really simple. Let's throw that in there, now that's huge of course. And we can probably drop down the segments quite a bit as well, just to save on any extra... Well, it's not going to save too much, but that's fine. And there we go. Now we're starting to see what it looks like with a round. That looks a bit interesting. Uh, but we want the particles to move away, of course, because it's a nozzle. So we're going to give them some speed. Let's give them a decent amount of speed. Let's say 150. And I tend to give them a bit of variation as well, because you want them to sort of look a bit more natural. So let's do that and away they go now that looks a bit weird it's just it's tracing the spline but the, the particles are just moving away kind of in in not random directions but depending on the orientation of this disc they're flipping over backwards and forwards but we want it to just target something so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually this is actually now this spline here i'm going to call this our emission spline and then I'm going to create another one, and I might give it a different color. Actually, let's um, let's give it a blue color. So I'm going to move this one over here, and I'm going to make it a bit. I'm going to make it bigger. Actually, no, I'm going to make the original one smaller. That's probably. Let's do that. There we go. Now, how are we going to target this this spline here? And I'll, I'll explain something. We're not. We don't want the, the particles to stick to this spline. I just want to use this spline here as like a target for where this these ones are going to aim. So I could actually have the emitter just static and just aim at this. So I could have it target the, the disc or something like that. But oh, I should get rid of this, by the way. We don't need that to be... The emitter was, uh, was a, had its tag on it. Let's do reset PSR. There we go, that's fine. So yeah, we want the we want the particles to kind of target this, but I want them to to hit a surface behind and stick to a surface as, as if it's painting it. So let's add a plane. This is only going to be for demonstration. We're going to have some geometry in the in the future scenes where we're going to 
paint something a bit more interesting than just a surface, a flat surface. So there we go. I'm going to offset it. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to add an X particles collider tag. Now, when the particles actually hit this, I want them to stick to it. So I want them to freeze. Um, there is a connect on collision. I'm going to turn the bounce, the friction and all that stuff down. What I want it to do is I want to trigger an action. So we're going to add an action. If you've done any of the other training, there's a, we've used those extensively. So I'm going to change the action type to direct action. And then in this mode here, uh, it's direct change is correct. And we don't want it to be changed to geometry. We want it to be freeze particles. And there we go. It's going to freeze these particles when they collide with this object. But obviously our particles aren't actually even going in that. Or oh, some of them are. There you go. So some of them are colliding with that surface. What we could do is also we could change the display. As they make contact, they could change to squares just to make them a bit denser. But you can see that's not really working. It, it is tracing because it is moving along, but they're going in all sort of random directions. So what we need to do is we actually go to the... Um, let's go for the cloner. Because what what's dictating the particle direction is actually whichever way this piece, this disk is facing. And currently it's flipping over depending on the direction of the spline. So we need to... Oh, this should be called target. We're going to utilize our target or rail if you like. And I'm going to check target on. Now target means that it's going to rotate to look at it. Uh, we might, might need to flip our disk here. Oh no, actually we don't. That's good. And now when I draw... You'll see we actually get a tracing of our whatever our target is. So let's extend the timeline. There we go. So it's going to stop at the end. So we'll need to turn off our emitter. Otherwise, it's just going to keep spray painting like so. Or we could loop it round. That would be another option. But that is a pretty cool looking way to paint your surface. Now, there's a few things to note here. Now, if we zoom into here and we look down or along this surface, you'll notice the particles are actually standing off the surface or even going through it a bit. So this problem is definitely better explained with a diagram. So we'll jump out and we'll sketch something now. So here we are. And if we imagine this as our, our surface, so we have our inside and our outside of our surface, we'll need some, some particles, of course. And if we just add a particle here and we give it some direction, so it's going this way towards the surface. And then we can imagine it progresses by the same speed each frame, so the same distance. So each frame, it moves along, it moves along, moves along, moves along, moves along. And then the next frame is detected as being through the surface. So what happens is, is the system detects that as being through the surface. It says, nope, that shouldn't be there. And it goes back to its last known position where it was outside that surface. And that's when it activates the freeze modifier, or the, sorry, the freeze action. So you can see there is actually even a little gap in the way I've drawn it here. But it could be even worse, especially if the particle's moving really fast. So let's, let's do that. Let's imagine the particle's moving really fast. Let's draw up here. So I'm going to draw one here. And we can imagine this is frame one. Let's do frame two frame three, and then frame four is the one that's going to get discarded. It's detected as being within the surface. And then that's the one that, that is, is removed completely. Uh, we should draw that direction line as well, just to make sure. And so it jumps back to the last known location, which is here. So it's even more exaggerated. That, that gap is now much bigger. And that's a problem. So what we do is we use subframe steps to improve the accuracy of when this freeze action is, is activated. So you can imagine, let's grab another color. If we add more subframe steps, the, the position of the particle is sampled more frequently in between each frame. So it's a subframe. So each time the position of the particle is sampled even more accurately than if it was per frame. And you can see what's going to happen here is the next one. This is the one that's detected as being through. And then it jumps back to the last known subframe position of the particle. And we get this one is our accurate freeze action. So if I just turn that back to a normal or a neutral one, and this one becomes our, our 
frozen particle, you can see it's now flush against that surface and it's more accurate. And of course, the more subframe steps we have, the more accurate the detection will be of the particle being in or out of that surface. So let's jump back into Cinema 4D and increase our subframe steps. So let's bring up our project settings by hitting Ctrl D. And you can see the X Particles tab here. And let's try five subframe steps. We should see a more accurate freeze action. Also notice we're actually landing on the backside of this. Now, that's probably because this plane is inverted. So, well, let's just let's throw a material on. And let's set that to front. So the side is front. And that instantly tells me that that side is being seen as the outside and that's the inside. So that's without having to make that editable. So we can either do two things here. We can flip the, the plane itself or we could tell the collider to only collide inside normals, inside uh, faces, I should say. And there we go. We're now landing on the correct side. Let's just zoom in, see how, how accurately it's attaching. Now it is better. Now, if you notice, they're also standing off quite a, quite a ways. Now, now, but it's consistent. And that's when you're, you're viewing your particles as dots, but actually they have a larger radius. So if I turn on circles and I force the display, you'll see that's because the particle radius is there. And you can see they are accurately colliding or more accurately colliding because they're kind of consistently on that surface, but they're way too large. So we can drop the particle radius. Let's do 0.1 to start with. Let's see what happens. It'll run a bit slower because the particle display is lower, but is, is more complex, I should say. And there we go. So they're way more on the surface, if you like. Let's hide our plane. We don't need to see that. There we go. Nice. So they are colliding, and we might want to go a few subframe steps more, depending on how accurate you really want it or how close we're going to get. If I go 10... See, it gets even closer. In fact, let's see if we're seeing that accurately. So let's just, this is another use of doodle paint I do actually, is uh, I actually mark stuff in the viewport and then I don't move my camera. So if we just kind of roughly sketch where this, how, how thick this edge is becoming and we drop our subframe steps back down to like three and I press play again, we'll get a new, see it's kind of a useful comparison right you can see how setting it to 10 subframe steps even just from three it's really made a significant difference to the accuracy of that collision okay so that's something to note uh, i think we might go for eight something like that to start with now an important aspect of subframe steps to bear in mind is that the higher that setting is the longer the simulation will take to process so you want to set this basically as low as possible to get your desired behavior and your particle look without going too high and sacrificing processor time so we this is our this is our drawing of our particles and we can do a couple of things this is the last bits i'll show for this part uh, it's run quite long so here we go if I scale down this particular one, this particular emitter, we'll actually get a different effect. So if it's really, really small, the particles, when they skip along, can you see, depending on how your target is, how close your target is to the wall, the less accurate it'll be. And it becomes a kind of like a projection almost of this, this target one. If you want it to be dead accurate, you basically just place this on the plane. So... There we go, just in front of the plane. And can you see how, just because of that projection, that difference in position from the surface, you get that inaccuracy. But there we go, we've changed it to kind of this, this perfect accuracy. Oh, yeah, one thing I should also note is, is the, if I hide these splines, let's hide the surface as well. Is, is the spread of the particles is dependent on how much they are or how large the emitter is originally. I want it to be minuscule. So I'm actually going to make this like a 0.1 scale. So it's, it's like a laser almost at the beginning there. And, but it's not spreading out at all. So you can see it's, it stays that laser thin all the way along. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the uh, spray paint emit emitter, XP emitter, jump to the object tab, and then this is where we can utilize that particle random blend. So what we're going to do is we're going to just increase this side 
Now, if I increase it a lot, you'll see... Oh, let's actually go back here. There we go. Oh, the display, I think, is still on circles. Yeah. So let's change it to dots. It'll be way faster. There we go. And you can see it's randomly emitting. And if I go down, you'll see... Can you see there? It's actually... If I go to 0.5, it's like 180 around that shape. In fact, let's just take that... Uh, we could mute these keyframes. If I just select these keyframes, uh, just mute them for a second. You can see around the the disc kind of creates a cone shape. So we want to utilize that, but not to so much. If I go right the way up, it, it's a 360 degree. It basically, in, it's emitting all the way around. We only want it to be really subtle because let's let it, let's let it animate again. So if I go back to Cloner, Let's unmute these keyframes. That's useful sometimes if you're just trying to diagnose something in a scene, but you don't want it to be moving. And here we go. Now we're starting to see a little bit more of an interesting look because the core of the particles, the most particles are still at the core, but we're getting a bunch sort of spraying out around. And so depending on how much you want this to look like a really organic looking spray, you know, we can play with that. I think I'm probably going to reduce that down somewhat. If I... um. If you notice, if I increase this way, it's going to actually go... It's going to spread in all directions, so that might work for us. See, see if I have it along, all the way along, it, it it's way too much, and it actually spreads out so much that you can't actually see the... Uh... Yeah. There we go. Now, if you need to... This this graph gets quite fiddly if you if it's so small like this because you're dealing with small values. You can you can kind of increase the height here, but that's kind of, you know, you might not want to do that. If I right click and hit frame all, and then I just twirl this down, and then you can see here, you have point, you can actually type in a value, and that's way more useful, I find, just to get a, kind of an accurate thing. There we go. You could even connect this value up to uh, some espresso rig and actually drive that. You could actually have a slider. So you could rig this all up. But I think we're keeping it quite simple for now. And there we go. So, this is the basis. Oh, I should actually turn our emitter off, shouldn't I? So once it's finished animating on frame 290, our spray deactivates at 290 as well. Maybe it overruns. Maybe 300. There we go. Awesome. So that's the rig we're going to use for the graffiti element in our scene. And in the next part, we're going to explore making and painting with stencils. So I'll see you in part two.